YouTube, welcome back to my daily. Like and subscribe. I'm bald now. Hey. Um, the hair is the real three-year plan. Yeah, okay, so Alveus. More, more, uh, Alveus updates. Uh, number one. I have decided against the blood python that Dobbins has offered me. I showed you guys the picture, right? Of the size of it? Yeah? Okay. Massive snake. And so it walloped him on the leg, right? It, it bit him on the leg. And, and that, like, a blood python bite is no joke. So I talked to Dobbins the other day. Um, and we were talking about the snake, and he was like, honestly, if you're the only one that's handling it, uh, that's probably fine, but I don't know that I'd want others, like, that it'd be good for other streamers to handle it during a program, because it'd be really bad if a streamer got bit, you know, like, live. Because if you get bit by, like, a carpet python or, or a corn snake or something smaller, right, it's like, you'll have a couple holes and then maybe a, dr maybe a drop of blood, but if you get bit by a blood python, it's gonna ruin your whole day. Um, so... and more. <laughs> so, I decided against that snake, uh, just because you know, it's, it's already bitten once. Blood pythons are also harder, apparently, with uh, heat and humidity requirements. Um, so I've decided against that, but I did say yes to both a carpet python and a ball python. So those are going to be our snakes at Alveus. Um, they're not, so I was thinking that it would be good to have a, a really big snake because that's a great, again, I've, I've said this before, but a high impact ambassador, right? You bring out a big Burmese python or something that's like a 12 footer, right? And then multiple people can hold it and they're like, wow, look at this thing, right? Super cool. Um, but this carpet python and ball python need a home right now. And it's the same story. And the carpet python is pretty big. I think she's at least six feet. So, um, she looks like this. Kind of. Does she look like this? Which one does she look like? Mm, like this? Yeah, she looks like this. Um, beautiful snake, right? So the carpet python's really great. Um, and then a ball python, which everybody knows. And the reason that I'm really excited about the ball python that just looks like this is uh, they're one of the most docile snakes in the pet trade. That's why, that's why so many people have ball pythons, but it's totally just like a little donut that you can pass to anyone and not be super worried about it. Um, so I think that'll make for a really great, really mellow ambassador. Whereas the carpet python may be a little more dodgy, ball pythons just chill. Um, and they're very cute. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I can still talk about, uh, you know, this kind of thing, right? Um, breeding for, breeding for color and how that affects snakes negatively. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, ball python, carpet python. So then the other thing that I had a conversation about was these parrots, right? Because I said yes to the African Grey and I said yes to the Blue Fronted Amazon. Um, and this lady really wants me to take the two macaws, um, like really bad. And she's willing to make a hefty donation, a hefty donation for me to take the two of them. And so I told her that if the macaws and the two smaller parrots can live together in a big aviary, um, then I would be, it would be a lot easier for me to consider it, but I don't want to dedicate a whole other enclosure wow. to two Peep macaws, pop, wow. thank you, uh, that have the same conservation story as the other parrots that I'll have uh, at Alveus, if that makes sense. So I'm going to, I'm going to the property, holy fuck, tomorrow to meet with a contractor, a fencing contractor, um, and look at the layout of stuff and see how big of an aviary I can build. She told me, tell me how big of an aviary you can build. I will tell you if the four of them can live together in it and we'll go from there. So there's a chance that we may be getting four parrots, but the two uh, macaws may not be as workable of ambassadors as the other two. People pop, wow. Uh, Betty, thank you for the seven months. Smiled. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. I really just need to see how realistic it is to build a really big parrot sanctuary or parrot aviary. Um, and it's going to be really expensive because stainless steel is the best material that you can make it out of so that it doesn't rust so that the parrots can't chew through it. But stainless steel is very expensive. Um, and to make a really big aviary, aviary out of it is very expensive. Um, but she has lots of really cool ideas. She thinks that I should have misters in there that the birds can operate <laughs> themselves, which would be a really cool behavior to teach and really, really good for the birds themselves, just to give them a little more autonomy um, in their enclosures. Um, and I'm putting... This is the other really big update. And this is an update you guys are probably going to be super disappointed by, but after a lot of thinking, I've realized that it really is just for the best, and it's, it's, it's a good thing, is that... I have to have, this emu is coming here, and then the two parrots are going to be inside with either me or Ella for several months 
um, just getting acclimated to us and, and bonding with us as, as trainers, handlers. Um, and to do that, I can't also do rehab because I was talking to Matt and I was like, can I put the emu in this other room? And could I put a parrot cage in the other room and then have my rehab room separate? Because I can't mix wildlife. Yeah, I'm a simp and... for Maya. Thank you, please. What Blaise. can I say? Yo. I can't mix wildlife and my ambassadors because of disease transmission. Um, and Matt's reaction was, I like, you can't take over the whole house for, for the animals, which makes sense. Um, because he just paid so much money for this house, right? So instead of doing any mammals, um, so instead of bringing home raccoons, opossums, cottontails, whatever, I'm only going to take baby raptors if they come in. Raptors with broken wings don't really need to come to me. They can stay at the center. If we get baby raptors, I need to take those because I'm the most qualified person to not imprint those babies and to raise them up properly. Um, so any baby hawks, owls, falcons, uh, if they can't, if they don't have a surrogate at the center, will come here. And the only way that I can think of doing that, I'm gonna make that rehab room, instead of being people rehab, it's gonna be for the parrots and the emu temporarily. And it's only for a few months, right, that the emu and the parrots have to be inside. So after that, I could, I could do more rehab, but honestly, I probably shouldn't pick it up again. Um, so that room is gonna be for the parrots and the emu. Um, and then, if I get baby raptors when that room is occupied, then they'll have to be in here um, in an enclosure. And then when I'm streaming, I'll have to move them into another People place talk. so that wow. they don't hear me talking. Don't mind me. Um, because I don't want them to, to hear me talking uh, because they can imprint on human voices. So um, that's the plan. So, but it's very possible that we don't get baby raptors when that room is occupied because we only have last year we only got five baby raptors not including screech owls and baby screech owls ginger is a surrogate for at the center so i don't need to take those but there were three great horned owls and then dip and dot and that was it so there's a chance that nothing even comes in that i need to take care of but alveus is just moving way faster than i thought i have animals that i need to take care of now um, and it just doesn't really make sense for me to put so much of my time into rehab when there are other people at the center volunteers and stuff that are qualified to do that um, so I need to, I need to direct my focus and also make use of the space that I've been given in this house. Um, so that's the plan. So people rehab is postponed slash canceled, um, because, because of Alveus and because I need built mammal enclosures for no reason. No. So, um, the big acrylic enclosure, I was either going to, uh, make it into an enclosure for Moomin, but what I decided instead is I think it would be a really special enclosure for this wow. carpet python. And anybody that knows snakes or has snakes knows that that size is kind of ridiculous, um, but if I can give that to the snake, because they're climbers, um, why wouldn't I? You know, so I'm really excited about that potentially working for the carpet python. Um, so putting lots of really cool branches in there that she can climb on. Um, let's see if we can find a picture of them in like trees. Yeah, carpet pythons are pretty big, actually. They're just thinner. Um, but yeah, they like to hang out in trees. So, so having lots of stuff in there for her to climb, um, and you know, I just think she'll be really happy. And I'm honestly not a huge fan of traditional reptile housing. Um, you see lots of, you see lots of reptile, reptile breeders have, uh, snakes and stuff and like, racks and drawers and stuff like this and honestly it may be sufficient i just don't know that much about reptiles but i'm not a big fan of it um i just i don't know i, I don't want to do that and i'm not going to have that many reptiles People, or that wow. kind of scale so i don't think that you know i i, I just i want to make something really big and really special for them because i can um so i would really like to put the carpet python in that big enclosure the ball python isn't as much of a climber so it'll just need a flat enclosure anyway so that'll be pretty easy um, obviously in addition to them being taken out pretty often. That's what the nice big acrylic enclosure is going to be used for. And then I wonder if there's any opportunity for them to live together. I would have to ask because that would be really handy. But I don't know. I have to ask Sammy. Um, okay, yeah. So, so that's the updates on 
reptiles and parrots kind of the parrots i'll have more of an update for you later i do think it'd be cool uh the the thing that michelle said because these are michelle's parrots that she wants me to take is is that they're the two macaws are just she thinks they're really really special birds she's also 70 years old and so she knows that these birds are going to outlive her and she really wants them to go somewhere where she knows that they'll be loved um and you know really well taken care of it's just going from two parrots to four parrots is a massive jump um, and so, and I don't know that it's a, a necessary jump for um, a program that's so small like Alveus. Uh, so if they can all live in the same aviary, I will absolutely consider it. If they can't, I won't uh, at this time. Anyway, I told her down the road I'll, I'll reconsider, but right now I'm just trying to find species that highlight different parts of, of places in conservation that need a voice, right? The meat trade, the pet trade. Um, the, the fur trade, etc. So, I think that's all the Alveus updates. When's the emu coming? Within the next few weeks. Nintendo was shot by skeleton. <laughs> 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 I get better content.